Orca Slicer is rapidly growing in popularity. So today, a guide on why you might use it and where to find the best features if you're migrating from another slicer. This is actually my second video on Orca Slicer, but when I made the first, I was still pretty new to it. However, since then, it has become my slicer of choice. My patron Derek was migrating from Prusa Slicer and was having trouble finding the items he was used to, understanding some new features and not knowing how to handle security options. He requested a guide and here we are. Let's start with the obvious by answering what is Orca Slicer? Orca Slicer is a piece of software that converts a 3D model into G-code for our 3D printers to understand. One great aspect is that Orca Slicer is completely free and open source. And this is despite it looking like an incredibly similar teal version of Bamboo Studio, the slicer used by Bamboo Lab, who don't make open source 3D printers. So how do we explain this? Here's a diagram of the most popular 3D printer slicers used today, and all of the ones on the left are related. At the top is Slicer or Slick 3R. It's been around for a long time, and you might notice that it has some similarities in the interface to Prusa Slicer. And that's because Prusa Slicer is based on Slick 3R. In fact, it was originally called Slick 3R Prusa Edition. Prusa have done a tremendous job bringing new features to their slicer, and best of yet, it's still open source, meaning that we have community forks like Super Slicer, which I consider to be like a Prusa Slicer Plus. For a time, it had everything that Prusa Slicer had, plus a few extra settings on top. And that brings us to Bamboo Studio, which is also an open source fork of Prusa Slicer. Underneath the hood, the actual slicing engine is Prusa Slicer, but with changes to the interface to suit their own machines. And this included a bunch of pre-made profiles. There was also a device tab added so you could monitor your prints in real time and directly control the printer and AMS. And that brings us to Orca Slicer, a fork of Bamboo Studio. But here's the thing, not only do we get the new improvements from Bamboo Studio, but we also get some of the added features from Super Slicer. For instance, the built-in calibration tests were originally based on those added to Super Slicer, but we also get features from Prusa Slicer that were left out of Bamboo Studio. For instance, multi-material support for non-Bamboo printers, such as Prusa's MMU, the Enraged Rabbit Project, and others. So now we know Orca Slicer's origins, but why would we choose it over the other options? Reason one is available features. And since it's drawing on so many other open source slicers, I see Orca Slicer as having the best bits of everything. Reason two is compatibility. I'm running printers from Bamboo Lab, whereas some of my other printers are open source and run Clipper firmware, and I've still got others running Marlin and Octoprint. For a while, I was using Super Slicer for all of the Clipper and Marlin printers, enjoying the fact I could upload to those printers directly over Wi-Fi, and then using Bamboo Studio separately for all the Bamboo Lab printers. But the beauty of Orca Slicer is I can now run all of my machines from a single piece of software. And perhaps most conveniently, it doesn't matter which of those printers I'm slicing for, I can still wirelessly send the G-code to them. Not only that, but when I click to the device tab, I'll be shown the web interface that I would normally get in my browser, including Fluid, Mainsail and Octoprint. And I know that if my Prusa XL ever comes, I'll be able to connect directly to that as well. Bamboo Studio already supports printers from other manufacturers. But Orca Slicer takes this a step further. We have generic Clipper and Marlin profiles if you need to start from scratch. And then compared to Bamboo Studio, we've got extra printers and even whole new manufacturers. Many of these are thanks to community contributions and it increases the chances of your printers being supported without any additional effort. Let's now move on to downloading and then setting everything up. And we'll cover whether or not you want the network plugin and whether you should make an account and sign in. We're going to download Orca Slicer from the GitHub. And to find the link, we're going to scroll down from the main page and click on releases. Currently version 1.7.0 is the latest release and we scroll down until we get to the assets section. If you're on Windows, you have two options. We have an executable installer that's automated and then we have a portable version, which is what I've done in the past. Simply click to download whichever version you need. If you download the executable, it's like any other program. We just click through the dialog until the slicer is installed. If you've downloaded the zip file for the portable version, you simply make a folder in a location of your choice. I've done so in program files and you extract all of the files into that folder, done. Down the track, if you're updating, you'll simply run the new exe file again. 
And if you're updating the portable version, download the new zip and drag all of its contents into the Orca Slicer folder, overriding when prompted. With everything installed, we can now run Orca Slicer for the first time. There's a couple of prompts that may be confusing. And the first of those is the Bamboo Network plugin. For a Bamboo Lab printer, if you want to do anything over your network, you're going to need this. And that's true if you're using full cloud capabilities and even if you're using LAN only mode. However, if you're using Orca Slicer for only Marlin and Clipper printers, you won't need this plugin installed to use them over your local network. Without the plugin, if you have a Bamboo Lab printer selected, clicking the device tab will do nothing, apart from creating a prompt giving you another chance to install it. However, if it's a Marlin or Clipper printer, even without the plugin, clicking the device tab will load the web interface for this machine. The next thing you might be unsure about is whether to create an account and log in. And whether you're using Orca Slicer or Bamboo Studio, in either case, we're talking about a Bamboo Lab account. If you're planning to run your Bamboo Lab printer in LAN only mode, you do not need to log in or make an account. We can see on this particular computer that I'm not logged in, but on the device tab, I can select a printer in LAN only mode and after a couple of seconds, I'll be able to control it. You will need to log in if you want to send prints and control your printers from anywhere in the world with internet over the cloud. Logging in adds this convenience as well as that of using the Bamboo Handy mobile app. Another benefit of logging in is that if you have Orca Slicer installed on multiple computers, all of your printer and slicer profiles will be automatically synced between them. Here's all the profiles are created on my main work computer running Orca Slicer. And since I'm logged in on this laptop, all of them are transported over without me doing any manual setup. The next thing you'll see on first run is the printer selection box. And you will need to click at least one printer. If you're just having a play, click one of the generic ones at the top for now. Now from the drop down, all of the printers that you ticked will be listed. If you want to add or remove a printer in future, you can get back to this at any time by clicking the gear icon to the right of the word printer. If you're adding a generic printer or customizing one of those already supported, we can tweak the printer profile by clicking on the edit preset icon. Here we can change what firmware that it's using, the print volume, put in custom start and NG code, tell Orca Slicer if it's multi-material capable, and also set up things like base retraction settings. And if you're not seeing everything you're looking for, make sure to toggle advanced. After adding a non-bamboo printer, you'll probably want to click this button to the right to set up networking. We click the firmware that we're using, enter an IP address and then click test. And if that's successful, you can update the machine name and click OK. The local address will be stored for in future and clicking the device tab will load the web interface. The next dialog you'll be presented with is for filament selection. Filter with these checkboxes up the top and then go through and click all of the filaments you want to use for that printer. Clicking on this drop down will then show you all of the available filaments. We can get back to this filament section by clicking the gear icon to the right of the word filament. How about a typical project where we slice and print? Where do we find the most important settings? Now that we're set up, let's run our way through a basic slicing job. If you're coming from Prusa Slicer, everything is divided into print settings, filament settings and printer settings. So let's find those on Orca Slicer. The printer settings we've already seen by clicking on the edit preset button next to the printer's name. For filament settings, we have the same type of icon next to the listed filament. And this is where you can change your flow ratio, also known as extrusion multiplier, temperatures for the nozzle and build plate, set max volumetric speed. And there's also a tab to control all of the part cooling. If you're looking for something more advanced, check through the other tabs. If you've made a change to the defaults, you can save that as a new preset. You can say I've added TT to the end of the name. Now all of the defaults will show up as well as any other ones I've previously saved. All of the print settings are found in the remaining part of this left hand box. We have quality for things like layer height, line width, seams, ironing, and whether you're using Arachne or Classic. Strength will cover thickness of perimeters, infill patterns and density. Speed covers exactly that. Support material, which we'll look at later. And in the others tab, we've got things like skirts and brims. And this is also where you'll find features like spiral vase mode or fuzzy skin. Again, after we've made changes, we can click the save button and then give our preset a new name. Now all of the defaults will show up as well as any custom ones that I've previously saved. To import geometry, we have a few options. We can drag a model directly onto the screen. We can click the plus button along the top hand menu, or you can use the inbuilt models. So let's right click, add a primitive and select the Orca cube. And this will be loaded onto the build plate. 
Once you click on a model, all of your manipulation tools will be across the top, like move, rotate, scale, and lay on face, keyboard shortcut F, if you wanna click on a surface to rotate it instantly. I'm gonna keep everything on the default, click slice plate. Like other slices, we have our preview with everything color coded, but we have the benefit of being able to untick objects to see what's making up the print. We also have a number of ways that we can preview the print, such as this one that shows the speed throughout. When we're happy, we can either print or export a G-code file if we're using SD cards. And assuming your printer is network connected, you'll be able to upload directly to it or upload and start the print immediately. And as far as the first print goes in Orca Slicer, this built-in cube is a pretty good one. Now let's move on to some things you might not be familiar with, such as projects and plates. Let's dig a little deeper. And one thing you might have noticed are projects. And really all these are, are a fancy term for a 3MF file. A project or 3MF file is a convenient way to save print objects and settings for later access. For instance, here I have a disk and then I've imported as a modifier this second triangular mesh STL pattern. I've then positioned it so it overlaps the top couple of layers, switch to the objects tab, and then set the triangular pattern to have a different top surface. Once we slice, we can see that we have a concentric pattern everywhere the triangles overlapped, and that gives a really nice aesthetic when the print is done. Check out my full video on this to learn more. By saving this as a project, we can access it later on and everything should be in position. Let's open one of these other projects to show how it works. For this file, a multi-part model has been restored in the correct orientation, as well as the correct colors being applied to each segment. A project or 3MF means I don't need to import the original SDL and set all of this up again. Other times you might make changes to the slicing settings but don't wanna save them in a new profile. For instance here, a giant benchy with organic tree supports. I'm gonna to come to home, new project to wipe everything, discarding my changes, and then I'll come back to home and load in that same project file. We can see that the print settings have been retained. So a project file or 3MF is just a convenient way to store any geometry as well as print settings and other things like filament allocations. And even if you're not interested in them, coming to home and then new project is a great way to wipe everything clean and get back to your safe settings. Another feature you might be unfamiliar with are plates and we can click the plus button up the top to add multiples of these. Let's say you've got a project with many parts to print, too many to print and fit in one go. Adding multiple plates gives you a way to efficiently plan your printing. For instance, one plate will be one of these frame pieces and I'll print that twice. This foot I'll print three different times. This dial I want in a different color so I'm keeping that separate. And then all of the little remaining parts I'll print together. Now's a good time to point out the difference between auto arrange up here versus the icon available for each plate. Clicking auto arrange for that plate will only affect the objects within its boundaries. However, clicking auto arrange up the top will prompt a dialog box and when we click arrange, the slicer will try and fit everything in as little plates as possible. If you click this one by accident, you can always do undo with Ctrl Z. You'll notice that you can click and make any of these plates active. And up the top, instead of just slice, we now have options for slice plate or slice all. Slice plate will slice only the one that is selected, but we can quickly slice the others by clicking on the thumbnail. And of course, from up the top or by clicking this top icon, we can slice every plate one after each other. Once we're in the preview tab, we can click between these to see the G-code for each plate. So what normally happens for me is I'll pick a machine, send the print, and then perhaps start printing on a separate machine, clicking that plate and then changing the printer. As you can see, that will quite often mix up the positions, but I'll get it roughly in place and then click auto arrange once more. I'll then slice that plate and send it off to a different printer. And that means this multi-plate interface helps me make complicated projects on multiple printers at once. One last thing, if you want to delete a plate, just zoom in and click the X. To finish, where to find some more important features and an extra security tip. Let's quickly cover a few extra features and the first being paint on supports. This job has one section underneath that I want to be supported, but the default support instead is gonna add it in these side holes where it's not needed. So I can click on the model and then come up to this icon here, which is support painting keyboard shortcut L. This will let me paint all of the areas where I want support. And there's even a handy fill option. So I can click this whole surface and get it done in one go. Now under support type, I need to change it from normal auto to one of the two manual options. And now when I slice, it's only applied to the section that I painted. The interface for modifiers is also a little different to Prusa Slicer. We can right click 
and will have options for support blockers and enforcers as well as generic modifiers. I'm going to select a cube and you'll notice that the left hand panel has switched from global to objects. This will allow us to select this cube. We can now control it independently, allowing us to move, rotate and scale until it's where we want. If instead we want to move the base part and the modifier, we simply click on its name on the left hand panel and we'll be working on the whole lot. Let's say that I want higher infill for strength where this cube overlaps. With the objects panel open, I can now click on it and make whatever print changes I want below. So let's make that change and up the infill density. When I slice, everything looks the same, but looking inside, we can see that we're a lot denser in this area just like we wanted. Up along the top, we have a calibration menu and there's a range of tests that we can access from this. For instance, this retraction test. Generally, we would have zero as our minimum and the maximum for direct drive will be something like two for a burden tube, maybe as high as 10. We pick the steps in between, click OK. The STL will be imported and all settings applied automatically. We can slice print, look at what height is best and then update our slicing profiles for best results. Finally, a word on privacy and security. And the first thing I've done is link this page below from Bamboo Lab that explains exactly what settings are required to access what, as well as how to run a printer in LAN only mode. And for those who are conscious of privacy, coming to preferences will reveal a specific option called stealth mode. As previous release notes explain, this will further server connections to the Bamboo Lab hardware management system cloud. So for those that wanna go a little bit further, it's nice that the option is there. I was going to include a section in this video on multicolor printing because Orca Slicer has a great interface for painting ordinary STLs to make them multicolored. But currently a big limitation is that it only supports machines with a single nozzle and a system like an AMS feeding in various filaments. And I'm really hoping that IDEX and tool changer machines are covered fully in the future. As I always say, the right option is the one that works best for you. And for me, it was a no brainer using a single slicer for all of my various machines. There's plenty more in this software, but hopefully this is enough to get you started. Thank you, Derek, for requesting the video. Thank you for watching the whole way to the end. Until next time, happy slicing and 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.